Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm also Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry at UCLA. And this is our teaching center where we conduct many hands-on courses all year long. Today we're going to do another PFM preparation. This time it's going to be tooth number seven on the Kilgore Typhon. And I think it's important to remember that the PFM needs to be prepared not only for the ceramic, but also for the metal and the opaque. And we need measurements like two millimeters of incisal reduction, 1.5 in the incisal facial, 1.25 in the mid facial, and one millimeter at the shoulder area to accomplish an aesthetic restoration. Your lingual clearance need to be between one and 1.5. And then we like to have a fossa that's a millimeter in a chamfer that's approximately 0.5 millimeters deep on the lingual. As you look at the preparation from the facial, we're going to need to have reduction that is going to be uniform across the front of that, and not only two millimeters off the incisal, but one millimeter off the interproximals as viewed from the facial. Let's keep the finish line 0.5 above the tissue and nice and rounded on the corners. So the burrs we're going to use for this are the ones that are used by many schools, the 6847016, which is a coarse diamond, followed by the fine diamond 8847016, the end cutting burr 8839012, which is an optional burr to use, and then we have an interproximal burr, this 850012, and then the chamfer burrs, the 6878K and the 8878K. And then, of course, the footballs, the 6379 and 8379023s. Now, the BFM for the lateral is a little bit different from the central, and namely that it's a shorter tooth. It's approximately one millimeter shorter, maybe a little less than one millimeter. So when we have the final preparation completed relative to the adjacent central, it should be approximately three millimeters shorter than that existing edge right there. And make sure you look at the tooth in occlusion and always look from the side, the critical view. So we're going to start with the 6847016, exactly like we did on the central in the previous video. Uh, really paying attention to nothing different. Uh, the edge will be reduced flat. Uh, we're not trying to angle the burr at this stage. The burr is essentially in the angle from the lingual surface to the facial surface. So you could say that the burr is being held perpendicular to the line of draw of the tooth in the mouth. And you can see that just like we had on the central, the challenge of getting enough lingual clearance, we need to steepen the diamond significantly in order to get the kind of clearance that we want, which would be at a minimum of one millimeter. And we're not quite done there, but once again, I think it's really important that you are conservative at first with your lingual clearance and your incisal reduction so that you have room to play around a little bit with the finishing to get the, the edge in exactly the right position. And you're going to see in this video, if you watch to the very end, that we do need to make a few modifications in the length uh, at the end after doing all the other steps. So we're just using the 6847016 to create the facial reduction. And remembering, of course, that the tip of this burr is about one millimeter up to about 1.2 millimeters or so. It's right in that range. And we can use that as a nice uh, guide for how deep the shoulder should be. And the widest part of the burr is 1.6 millimeters. So really the burr itself provides you with all of the reduction amounts that we need to have to do the facial reduction on this preparation. So we're just continuing to remove the areas between the depth cuts and make it relatively smooth. And when we're completed with this step, we'll be ready to go in approximately. And if you look at the preparation right now, it looks a little bit like a, an over-prepared porcelain or ceramic veneer and that's the type of look you want to have before you go interproximal. Now, I've got interproximal on the distal already, and I'm just showing you here on the mesial. It's not a particularly interesting step. We have shown this many times in previous videos, 
But the key, once again, is to just, you know, to leave that little shell as long as possible before you manipulate the burr through the interproximal area. And of course, the purpose of that is to allow you to more easily place the much larger, however, appropriate diamond, which is a 6847016, interproximally. We want the diameter of this burr to be approximately the same as the shoulder, and the shoulder needs to wrap around interproximally to hide any metal margin that we need to have coming from the lingual. So there is no difference whatsoever in the measurement requirements on even a very small tooth when it comes to a PFM. Let's take a look at the lingual reduction now exactly the same as we did on the central incisor utilizing this chamfer ended diamond which is called the 6878K016. It's a very effective efficient burr. And then finally the lingual fossa which as you know has to be at least one millimeter reduced and we can use the tip of this to obtain the right amount of clearance reduction. So take a look at things and see where you need to make some modifications. You can clearly see the incisal edge is too long. It needs to be reduced so that it's approximately 2.75 maybe to 3 millimeters shorter than the incisal edge of the central. And I love getting these determinations before we start the preparation so we have these great reference points upon which to gauge the progress of our preparation. So we can continue to reduce on the incisal. And now at this point the incisal edge has become an actual edge. It was a flat area. So while we're reducing we can kind of angle the burr a little bit to get a little more lingual clearance at the same time. You can see the tip of the burr can be used to gauge how wide that shoulder is. You can see we're using the red stripe diamond at this point because it's a, a smoother finish, which is desirable. Some people like to use a slow speed at this point, but I think a high speed or electric uh, works out really well. Hold the burr straight up and down along the long axis of the tooth to to get the right taper. Let the burr tapered edge create the taper that you need. And this is just blending the chamfer to the shoulder with that little shoulder bevel transition area that we talked about at greater length on the central. I think it's coming along pretty good. And now we can utilize the fine diamond egg shape or football shape burr to smooth off the lingual and get just a little bit more reduction, probably another tenth of a millimeter or so. And then some kind of a composite polishing cup or disc would be really helpful. I use these in clinical practice all the time while I'm preparing natural teeth. It creates a beautifully smooth finish and uh, I think that it will work really well for you. So let's assess what we've got here at this point. Ooh, don't like that. Look at that mid facial bulge. That's got to go. And when I look from the incisal view or occlusal view, I think the draw, in other words, the taper between the mesial and distal is a little bit too tight. It's insufficient. So we need to make a little bit more. So I think it's important to make those corrections so you can see that there's been a definite change there. The bulge has been removed. And we've also corrected the mesial distal taper issue by allowing the burr to create the taper or even maybe tipping the burr slightly in the case where we have something that looks too parallel. The incisal edge correction needs just a little bit more. It's just ever so slightly too long. So we can use uh, the finishing diamond very carefully to get that length exactly where we want it. and finesse the corners and make sure that they're nice and smooth. 
and we've got it where we want it. Yeah, I think that's probably about where I want to keep this preparation. So after a few finishing touches, I think that uh, we'll have a preparation that is uh, pretty nice. I, I don't like sharp edges, uh, so if we can bevel these little areas, these little corners between the lingual and the proximal and between the incisal and the lingual, uh, I think that's always a really good idea. This preparation goes pretty quickly because you're not reducing a lot of massive tooth structure. but uh, it still has the same requirements for precision, measurements, draw, smoothness, all of those things in the final preparation as, as any other prep would have. I think it turned out okay. Uh, you know, at first when we looked at it about five minutes ago, it wasn't quite where we wanted it, but I think it looks pretty good at this point. It meets the criteria for uh, passing PFM preparation. I hope that you found this video helpful. I plan on doing more PFMs. One of my uh, followers or subscribers had requested that we do many PFM preparations. So I'm on a tear doing one PFM prep a day for as long as I possibly can. And hope that you stick around to see the rest of the series and have a great day.